Donut Operator, Fed Boys Are Destroying Portland Antifa. Which isn't even really true. Wow, you, you were quick. I looked away for half a second. Fed boys are destroying Portland Antifa. Not really true. Uh, what they're doing is they're running around and uh, effectively kidnapping uh, protesters, taking down their information and releasing them. Why would they do this? Why would they take uh, uh, information and then release them? Gee, I wonder. So let's see what Donut Operator has to say about this, our, uh, our friendly former cop. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Operator, take it away. This video is brand new clothing, fishing, boating, nine dollars plus 5%, 22%, 50%. You spend over $100, so check it out now, sportsandsky.com. Hi everyone, Donut here. Guess what? Antifa. Do you guys know that Instagram took my video down of me making a parody of about running farm equipment over members of Antifa? They said it was harmful. Anyways, I came across a video today and it just- Gee, I wonder why a video of you parodying killing people with a farm equipment would be harmful. These people on the right have no concept of what uh, stochastic rhetoric is. The idea that you can uh, say something or put out an image, and even if it's not a direct call to action, which many of these uh, right-wingers don't do, I, I will grant them this, they do not do direct calls to action. What they do is they, uh, they put out videos showing, ha, isn't this cool, isn't this funny? The idea of running over Antifa with farm equipment. And then act shocked when people actually do attack Antifa with farm equipment or, or anything else because it's funny or because they thought it was cool. And the approval of those things causes harm, causes demonstrable harm. It just warmed my heart. What are you doing? Use your words. What are you doing? Use your words. What are you doing? Use your words. What is going on? Who are you? NLG will get you out. What's your name? Tell us your name. Okay, you're fine. We'll get you out. We got you, friend. We got you. NLG. Some comradeship and solidarity right there. You just violated their rights. Oh, kidnapping people. You just violated their rights. I think that, and I think them kits, and I'm like, that local police, hmm. Them boys got nice kits on, and they snatching people up and putting them in unmarked mom minivans and driving off without saying anything. What is going on? That's what fascism. <laughs> like this is one of the early stages of fascism: is secret police without any oversight or identification coming in and snatching people up and making lists. Like, I, don't, I don't want to seem alarmist here, but it's fucking true. When, when you have groups of people who can operate independently without any kind of oversight or accountability, particularly to the, uh, the, the communities they're operating within, and they're snatching people up, they're taking information down, and then they're releasing them, why would they release them if they were under arrest? They're compiling lists. They're compiling lists of dissidents, of people who might uh, fight against a, a, a fascist takeover of the government, as if the Trump government isn't already in charge of every relevant thing. And with those lists, they can start actually disappearing people. Not off the street, not with people uh, holding up their phones recording it, but at night, when they're sleeping in their beds at home, when no one's around to pay attention. All of a sudden you wake up one day and it's like, hey, uh, anyone seen Jake around? Uh, I mean, he came in late last night, but I mean, I definitely heard him come in. No one sees Jake again. 
or maybe uh, he he surfaces in some uh, some prison somewhere, uh, having had the shit beat out of him daily. This is what happens when authoritarianism and fascism comes to a country, comes to a, a society. When I got to searching and I found a ton of juicy little videos on Andy Knows Twitter. Andy, if you'll remember, was the guy that went undercover in Chaz and saw a bunch of crazy stuff and reported on it. Andy's like on the Antifa's most wanted list. They look for- That's because he compiles lists of protesters and activists and gives them to right-wing groups as kill lists him at the Portland protest so they can beat him up again. They hate Andy so much that they harass any old random Asian dude walking around at these Portland protests. Who are you? Why the middle finger? What's your name? Who the f*** are you? Who are you? Why? Oh yeah. Hey, why are you Do you here? think that I'm Andy No? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, you racist yeah. c***. <laughs> <laughs> It's not any random Asian guy. It's someone who, with a mask on, kind of looks like Andy Nyo. I'll grant, the protesters kind of jump to conclusions here. That's, that's not a good look. But it's not any random Asian guy. He kind of looks like Andy Nyo in a mask. Unfortunate, I, I do feel sorry for the dude for getting that uh for that happening to him but this is not just ran any random uh asian dude in a, in, in in portland that's that's not what's happening here Andy, what's wrong? Yeah, just be proud no, no, I, I'm super proud that I'm not Andy. Well, but I'm really is... irritated that you stand here no, and put your middle fingers in my face. You're a purpose. bunch of racist cunts and, and, and you gotta stop. Think about, Andy, Think about why you're here. Think about why you're here. If you're not Andy, then you wouldn't be antagonizing. You know exactly what you're doing. Then you wouldn't be You know exactly. I don't think your argument has internal all done, all done. There's no logic. All done. Wait, wait, all done. Okay, all done. Yeah. Sorry, but I didn't see the random man who was an ally with these people antagonizing anything. They started yelling at him and flicking him off. And he's like, you're a bunch of racist cats. This bullshit happens all the time. Anyways, back to the fa I don't think he was an ally of theirs because he was talking about think about why you're here. And calling them racist that may, maybe i'm misinterpreting what he's saying but regardless yeah they, they were a little out of line there uh, i'll i'll agree with that but i also uh don't blame activists in portland for being a little uh trigger happy when it comes to identifying andy Neo because he is a menace particularly to portland activists and antifa face mask kitted up spooky boys coming in and snatching up antifa people my first thought is they look kind of federal it's true they are federal why would a bunch of federal officers be running around portland snatching people up maybe it's because this is what government buildings are starting to look like right now maybe it's because according to andy they're starting large fires every single night vandalize everything in the area leave and leave a mess the city cleans in the morning and the cycle starts again at night maybe because according to portland police numerous lawful orders were given to disperse but instead people threw glass bottles paint rocks ball bearings and other projectiles at officers oh no they had paint and ball bearings thrown at them in their military-grade armor with military-grade weaponry. Oh, no. At that same protest, the same video we were just watching, one guy learned the hard way you shouldn't put a laser pointer in a cop's face. <laughs> these wonderful men in uniform the u.s marshals federal protective service u.s customs and border protection and homeland security oh no it's not just local cops anymore oh no if you assault them you're facing federal charges 
Those aren't the charges that you want. According to reports, federal officers are protecting federal property and personnel in downtown Portland, including the Marco Hatfield Federal Courthouse, Pioneer Courthouse, and Edith Green Wendell Wyatt Federal Building and Terry Shrunk Plaza. Prosecutors say there has already been more than $50,000 in damage to federal courthouses. Federal prosecutors have said nearly a dozen people have been arrested and they are facing a variety of charges from assault on federal officers to destruction of federal government property and disorderly conduct. Who exactly? Yeah. They're... they're federal officers coming in to keep the peace and by peace we mean to remove any protesters who might actually agitate for change i mean that's that's what they're doing they're going in they're intimidating people who were trying to agitate for change uh, as we went over with the Sargon video the other day, uh, the issue is is that the at least the mayor and governor of the the mayor of Portland, the governor of Oregon, seem to be on BLM's side. They want this change made, but they they need some other people on their side or something like the city council or what have you, uh, particularly for Portland. So they're agitating for this change. And destruction of property is the only way to get people to listen. And again, I, I while I, I'll go ahead and believe the Portland police's claim that uh, they had rocks and whatnot thrown at them, uh, I literally don't believe Andy Neal when he says they're they're lighting fires every night, simply because I don't believe anything Andy Neal says. Clear are they arresting? And what are those people being arrested doing? Oh, and by the way, Antifa set up an autonomous zone. Shortly after they set it up, though, federal police said, no, that's not going to work, and arrested nine people. Let's take a look at what that autonomous zone looked like. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, nice, nice. Got a little battle shield there, huh? Nice, nice, nice. No, they're just <laughs> top embassy. That, I guess it's the red tent right there. What's happening is these people are getting arrested for these violent what? crimes, and then they're being released, like, the same day and just going out and... What was the point there? What exactly were you trying to say? Because, yeah, there there was some burning. Uh, unclear what that was. Uh, let's... Um... I mean, frankly, that looks like a, I mean, yes, there is some destruction of property here and obviously a lot of, uh, of, uh, graffiti and tagging, but that looks like a fire pit, like something that was specifically, uh, not specifically designed, but, uh, repurposed as a fire pit where they burn like wood or some other stuff. Uh, maybe some signs cause I see some, some metal work here, uh, you know, while people were gathering around as part of the uh, the the satellite chop, so to speak. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Oh, nice, nice. Got a little battle shield there, huh? Nice, nice, nice. No, they're just <laughs> top embassy. That, I guess it's the red tent right there. What's happening is these people are getting arrested for these violent crimes, and then they're being released like the same day and just going out and doing. So Umbra six one four. Well, it does. Uh... It, while it can cause some people to go anti-protest, the point is it sends the message and gets the attention of the people in power. Uh, I'm sure that you would be supportive of people who are just peacefully uh, standing around chanting, uh, and that's nice, but that does nothing. And there's literally nothing the protesters can do to change the opinion of most of the people who are anti-protest. Uh, what we need to do is change the minds of the people in power and by making it difficult, if not impossible, for them to just ignore it or sweep it under the rug, that changes the minds of people in power. More violent crimes, and that's another reason why the federal police has shown up. This chick's been arrested twice in the span of a couple of weeks. The federal police are showing up because they are, because the government has decided that they're not going to acquiesce to the demands and the protesters aren't going home. So then they need to shut them down some other way. And so they are, well, initiating, uh, not martial law yet, but a violent, uh, militaristic authoritarian shutdown. This one's been arrested three times. 
Uh, this one's been arrested twice also. This guy's been arrested twice. As I said earlier, those federal charges are something you don't want to have. Let's look at some of the people who have already caught some of those federal charges. Trans activist who boasts of having a female penis was arrested at an Antifa riot in Portland and charged with assaulting a federal officer. This guy was arrested and charged by federal authorities in Portland for attempting to burn a federal building. Hell, this guy was arrested for using a slingshot to fire ball bearings at fire and rescue. And he says he took off running and was armed with a crowbar. Police arrested him and found a bunch of other weapons on him. I find it hard to believe that he was firing at fire and rescue. Fire and rescue are pretty, uh, pretty positively received among protesters because they actually help the community. And what is wrong, Taco Bell Ninja? Looks like we got some fireworks, a knife, some road flares, gas masks, slingshots. Oh, God, he even had the glass slingshot ammo, those little ball bearings that are made of glass. Don't forget the most dangerous item of all, the assault tennis racket. I think one of the most interesting federal arrests I've seen so far is a guy with a hammer trying to hold a door shut to a federal building while those same federal officers who were all kitted up are trying to come out. When they do finally manage to get out the door because there's like 30 of them inside, 23-year-old Jacob Michael Gaines uses this hammer right here to strike an officer. Hit the door! Yeah, defense by any means necessary. That's not a swarm of angry bees. I'd want to f*** with. The Protect and Serve subreddit, as always, has the best comments for this video. Motherfuckers trying to spawn kill. I see nothing negative about this. That guy is going to get the federal felony with a sentence up to 20 years. There isn't parole in the federal system. No doubt, minimum on assault with a deadly weapon is 10 years. Maximum is 25. Rumor is that DOJ has directed no pleas below maximum for rioters, so I would expect him to go to trial and probably get 15 to 20 years. Oh no. <laughs> no pleas below max for rioters. It's, it's so beautiful. I'm sorry, I need a moment. Hey, what the fuck? Get off. I love these people who two years ago would have been talking about worrying about a government crackdown and taking the, well, not two years ago, five years ago would have been crying about a, a government crackdown, taking their guns or taking their rights away. Now cheering on as the government takes people's rights away and uh, locks them up for protesting. It's like they forget how America was founded and how anything gets done, which is by agitating and destroying things that are not people to make a point and get the attention of the public and the people in charge. Yeah, it, it did look like he was uh, swinging the, uh, the, sa the hammer at a person. Uh, I'll not deny that. Uh, but as far as he knew, they were uh, white supremacists invading his town. So, and that is the reason why he needed a hammer to protest to defend against, uh, well, anti-Antifa. No. Are you? No, Taco Bell Ninja, when we say defund the police, we first of all, we don't mean to completely remove police from the equation. What we want is uh, to have police be, uh, be a part of a community system which helps prevent, which actually helps prevent crime. Community centers to give kids things to do that aren't crime. Uh, greater investment into uh, public sector so that there's uh, more infrastructure and better employment opportunities, uh, investment into schools so that we don't have this school to prison pipeline, uh, having things other than police to respond to emergency situations so that it's not an armed paramilitary group who shows up to handle things like uh, uh, domestic assault, drunkenness, and, uh, or, or not domestic assault, but domestic disturbance, assault, or, uh, God damn it, assault on the brain, 
domestic disturbances, uh, drunkenness, uh, mental health issues, uh, suicidality, all these different things that currently police respond to, and they are wholly untrained to handle. Yeah, I know uh, some people uh, have find it weird when people think for themselves and don't accept uh, government propaganda wholesale, even when they're older. Them mindless zombies. Did you notice that? Especially the girl that was with him trying to hold the door was screaming, what are you doing? Get off of him! Like, he didn't just use a big-ass hammer. Because they didn't fucking identify themselves, you idiot. They didn't know who they were. Especially since they were just in, in fucking camo. Sure, maybe they had police in a, in a, a badge across their, their chest like the two in the first video you showed. But do you think they saw that even if it was there? They didn't identify themselves. They didn't shout police or federal or, or CBP or anything else. So they didn't know who the fuck they were. That's, that's one of the big issues with these people. Even if you accept that they're doing something right... What's stopping groups like Patriot Prayer or the Proud Boys or the Three Percenters or one of these groups from getting similar kits and going to areas and grabbing people they don't like and the people they grab are left to the decision. Do I assume these are federal agents who are just going to take my information and release me, which is bad enough, and so I go quietly to avoid a resisting arrest penalty? Or do I resist because these might be white supremacists in, bent on eliminating me from the conversation and I resist and then if they are police then I catch that resisting arrest it ticket oh well it's not a ticket it's a fucking federal charge that's the issue with these police hey best on each how's it going Uh, yeah, you do have to identify yourself if you're police. That's how it works. I don't move to the center of the Insurrection Act, but I disagree with not having an armed, armed officer show up. Except that the whole idea behind sending uh, different responders than police is that those often turn violent and deadly because of the police. So if we send groups who are trained in de-escalation, in conflict negotiation, in handling people who are not, uh, uh, who are not in, of sound mind, who, are, who, who have issues, if we send people who are trained in those de-escalation tactics, they're much less likely to turn violent. Talk to any nurse in a, in a psychiatric ward or a, a social worker or a, a mental health is, expert and they'll tell you about the uh, crazy, big, uh, armed with a hammer or other weapon people that they've had to deal with and how they do so without guns, without tasers, without tear gas and rubber bullets. They become deadly because of the police most of the time, not because the the people that, that are being responded to are violent and lash out. It's because the police don't have conflict training the way that uh, a properly trained uh, conflict resolution expert could. They don't have de-escalation training. Their idea of de-escalation is calm down, calm down, taser, or calm down, calm down, shoot hammer to hit a federal officer you can't do that this got posted on the acav reddit and they were literally calling for more violence against cops and calling this person a hero shouldn't that sub be banned based off of reddit's terms of service then oh you sweet sweet summer child <laughs> yeah reddit doesn't really give a fuck when it comes to doxing police officers talking about doing violent things against them you know silly little things like that i love that the so from what i understand i'll be honest uh i haven't been on reddit in a while i just kind of fell off it uh but they do have issues if you're pointing if you are calling for violence against specific police officers 
against uh, if you actually put a, a cop's name out and say let's teach him a lesson or let's uh, let's go beat his ass or something like that that reddit has a problem with but they don't have an issue with someone putting someone's information out there just to put the information out there like how uh, Antifa activists on reddit have put the names of different police officers who have harmed protesters like the the cops who uh, pushed the old man down in uh, was it uh, Boston or New York. Uh, this is like a month ago. There's so many things have happened. I forget exactly where it was. Uh, yeah, it was Buffalo. It was Buffalo, New York. They just walked by, pushed the guy down, and left him bleeding on the sidewalk. And uh, their names were released, uh, basically, so that people could know who they were, where they where they were, so that people could be aware of their of these violent cops who don't care about the public, and where they were allegedly serving the public. video one of their comrades took will be exhibit a right you just wanted to get a nice clip of your hero there smacking a federal officer with a hammer but all you did was give the police a really really great piece of evidence to show in court oh yeah and one more little video that i wanted to show from portland that just tickles my pickle an antifa dude decided to open the car door of the wrong drill sergeant that knew a little judo <laughs> Uh, yes, they did get charged after a great deal of public outcry and uh, pushing to the uh, protest and uh, and um, petitioning and making it clear that we weren't going to let them get away with it. And when they were charged, the entire conflict resolution squad of that police force resigned in protest. I noticed that this started as soon as he opened it, opened the door, and uh, is completely absent of any context of what happened before. This is something that people like Andy Neil love to do, which is show that uh, show people in Antifa acting, uh, you know, opening doors or reaching into people and ignoring that prior to them doing that, the person may have been antagonizing him. Now, I, I don't know this person. I don't know this situation. I don't know what happened before that. I'm just pointing out that there was obviously things which occurred before this and they're telling him to get out like they may have been telling him to do so before and he was probably being uh, belligerent to them back. What the fuck out of here? He just on video. I'm on video, brother. What was that? What was that? He's got arrows in the back of his car. Hey, he's got a bag of bullets. He's got arrows in his car. Hey, we need a bunch of people down here now. Bow in the air, Bow in the air, And that is all I have today, everyone. For all you federal officers in Portland who are now trying to calm every. Okay, yeah. This is about what I expected with uh, with Donut Operator running apologia for nascent fascism in America. As Trump rolls out his secret police to uh, police the the people he doesn't like, and uh, all in the name of public law and order, which uh, you know there, there's a real simple way to. Uh, make this stop and that's to defund the fucking police Move the funds away from the police and into other public sectors so that we can prevent crime We can prevent people uh, from feeling that crime is the only method of uh, making a better life for themselves or uh, That crime is the only option they have and more importantly uh, we can uh, create a system where police are held accountable for the actions they take. So when police do hurt someone in the line of duty, that they are held accountable if they used excessive force or did something they weren't supposed to. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. Remember to like, share, and leave a comment because it helps me. Subscribe and ring that bell to help you. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.